A keen corner. Much has been said in the private session about the action of the penny potentiaries in signing it all or in signing without first giving their document before the cabinet. Now, I also want to make this clear. The answer which I gave and that signature which I put in that document would be the same in Dublin or in Berlin or in New York or in Paris. If we had been in Dublin, the difference in distance would have made this difference. That we would have been able to consult not only the members of the cabinet, but many members of the law and many good friends. There has been talk about the atmosphere of London and there has been talk about slippery slopes. Such talk is beside the point. I knew the atmosphere of London of old and I knew many other things about it of old. If the members knew so much, about slippery slopes before we went Why did they not speak then? The slopes were surely slippery, but it's as easy to be wise afterwards. I submit that such observations are entirely beside the point. And if my signature has been given in error, I stand by it whether it has or not, and I give the same decision at this moment in this assembly. <coughs> it has also been suggested that the delegation broke down before the first bit of English bluff. I would remind the deputy who used that expression that England put up quite a good bluff for the last five years here. And I did not break down before that bluff. And does anybody think that the respect that I can for them in a few years was in any way lowered during two months of negotiations? That also is beside the point. The results of our labor are before the dawn. Reject or accept. The President has suggested that a greater result could have been obtained by more skillful handling. Perhaps so. But there again, the fault lies not with the delegation. It rests at the dawn. It is not afterwards they should have realised our limitations. Surely the dawn would have misled us, and our abilities could not have been expected to increase because we were chosen as plenty of potentiaries by the dawn. The delegates have been blamed for various things. It is scarcely too much to say that they have been blamed for not returning to recognition of the Irish Republic. They are blamed at any rate for not having done much better. A deputy, when speaking the other day with reference to Canada, suggested that what may apply with safety to Canada would not at all apply to Ireland because of the difference in distance from Great Britain. It seemed to me that he did not regard the delegation as being wholly without responsibility for the geographical propinquity of Ireland to Great Britain. It is further suggested that as a result of their labours, the delegation made a resumption of hostility certain. That again rested the law. They should have chosen a better delegation. And it was before we went to London that should have been done, not when we returned. I say that this treaty gives us not recognition of the Irish Republic, but it gives us more recognition from Great Britain and the Associated States than we have got from any other nation. Again, I want to speak plainly. America did not recognize the Irish Republic. As things in London were coming to a close, I received cable cards from America. I understand that my name is pretty well known in America. And what I'm going to say now will make me unpopular there for the rest of my life. But I am not going to say anything or hide anything for the sake of American popularity. I received a cablegram from San Francisco saying, Stand fast, we'll send you a million dollars a month. Well, my reply to that is, send us half a million and send us a thousand men fully equipped. I received another cablegram from the American Association for the Recognition of the Irish Republic. And they said to me, Don't weaken now! Stand the devil in! We'll let that branch come over here and stand in this boat. The question before me was, were we going to go on with this fight without referring it to the Irish people for the sake of propaganda in America? I was not going to take that responsibility. And does this may be the last opportunity I shall ever have of speaking publicly to the door?
I only want to say that I stand for every action as an individual member of the cabinet. Which I suppose I should be no longer. I stand for every action, no matter how it looks public. And I should always like the name to remember me like that. In coming to the decision I did, I tried to weigh my own responsibilities. Deputies have spoken as to whether dead men would approve of it. And they have spoken as to whether children, yes or no, would approve of it. But few of them have spoken as to whether the living approve it. In my own small way, I try to have before my mind what the whole lot of them would And in that way is the proper way for us to look.